I will be dealing with severe community acquired infections. As the name suggests, these are those infections which have been acquired directly from the community. But not necessarily does that happen in real life also. Because uh, there are quite a few times when the patient has been in the hospital but now is at home and then is coming to the hospital after say a month or two. Still, will we consider this patient to be having a community acquired infection or hospital acquired infection? We'll see that during my presentation. Amongst the various infections being acquired from the community, respiratory tract infections form the biggest chunk of infections that occur. They account for nearly 35 to 57 percent of the total infections. Abdominal sites are to follow until about 23 percent. Urinary tract infections followed by skin and soft tissue infections. Community acquired pneumonia is the number one leading cause amongst the infectious diseases resulting in death. It's the sixth leading cause of death in more than 65 years of age group. Along with influenza, it forms the eighth leading cause of death overall in the United States of America. It affects nearly 4 million adults in the United States of America, resulting in 600,000 hospitalizations per year. Unfortunately, we don't have such data from our own country, but I don't think we would be far behind as far as the proportions are concerned. This accounts for nearly 36% of the patients ending up in the ICU, of which uh, the mortality would vary depending on the site of care. The highest mortality is seen in those patients who are admitted in the ICU, who are on vasopressors, who are being ventilated, while the mortality goes down if the patient is just being monitored in the wards or in the OPD, the mortality is even lesser, which is about less than 1%. The mortality usually occurs because of refractory hypoxemia, refractory shock and multi-organ failure, despite instituting appropriate treatment. Since the mortality is so high, it is very important to stratify the patient according to where the patient needs to be managed, whether the patient needs to manage at home or in the hospital, in the wards or in the ICU. So how do we do that? There are various risk stratification scores that need to be considered when deciding the management or the site of management for the patient. One of them is this pneumonia severity index, which takes into account the demographic factors, coexisting illnesses, uh, physical examination, whether the patient has an altered mental status, blood pressure, temperature, pulse, laboratory and radiological findings. And then each of these parameters is given a score. According to the score, it is decided how uh, what is the risk of mortality in such a patient and where should the patient be monitored. But this is a very complex kind of a tool for stratifying and cannot be used in an OPD basis on a day-to-day -day basis.